Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello, hello chat. Are you all well? I'm just looking to see if anyone's actually hearing me in chat. Are we actually live live? <laughs> It'll take a few seconds just to uh, spin round, methinks. Apparently I am live on the chat page. Yes, and uh, Vidian says we has a live page. So there you go. You can't hear Sav and Keith. Chiefy Keefy, because I've got them muted. Yeah, I can hear them in this ear, but you can't. <laughs> you can't see them either, because I'm not set a shot up with them. No. <laughs> Nobody knows you're there, Sav. No. It's all uh, it's all uh, good. it's all okay it's all good. Um, so uh, barring any more um, developments uh, with uh, my hardware that uh, happened today, um, I won't go into that because it's been rather fraught for the past few hours. Um, but there you go. Got vid and loud sound, lovely. Is it loud enough for you, Liana, or shall I turn it up a little bit? Do you want some more volume? Shall I pump up the volume? Check it out and all that. In it, no, okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll be kicking off in about five seconds, and then we'll be kicking off in chat shortly after that. I should think, because <laughs> I make it nine o'clock. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to have um, one of these, and then some of that. Yeah. So um, yeah, you know what I mean. Hello, good evening and welcome. It's just gone nine o'clock. Yes, and it's Tuesday the 21st of July 2015. Nearly time, nearly time for breakfast. Yes, I was just watching my call drop there uh, on the laptop because <laughs> Sav and Keith had just dropped off. Uh, yes, nearly time for breakfast, um, which is going to be rather interesting this year. Yes. Um, there's no flanges, there's no flanges at all on this show. I'd just like to say Dave the Rayon. No. And that's the first and only mention, apart from this one, of flange during the next hour. Yes. There's no other mention of that particular item um, in the show whatsoever. No. <laughs> yes, so good evening, chat. Who we got in? We've got Chief. Yeah, he's just been talking to me. Uh, Ridian, isn't it? Rob, Kelly, Monster, Robin, Aaron. Dave the Rayon, I've just spoken to you. Miles, hello Miles. Pete, Tom, Disco Des. Disco Des knows all about Vape Fest because he's bringing cider. Like what is in here. Only probably better. Yeah, probably better cider than I've got in there. Um, <laughs> Blaze and Ashley it might be. And Bernice. Hello Bernice. Um, no. If you mention that word in chat, I will have the guys delete it from the chat. So... Vapor Trails TV staff, if you see that word beginning with F and ending in E, delete the post. I do not want to see any of those any of those items in my chat room tonight. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. It's all good. Uh, yes, Leanna Lawless has it right. Excuse me bending down there trying to see my screen. Um, but there you go. So, what have we got tonight? Well, a bit of a, bit of a, bit of a strange week really, because after I left you last week, uh, the following morning I was up to the northeast and then up to Scotland and I did not appear back in South Yorkshire until um, Saturday afternoon. So it's been a bit um, it's been a bit interesting getting the show ready for you this week. But I was quite active with my camera in the car. So I've got not one, not two, but three little segments for you um, recorded in the car last week. Um, <laughs> Disco Des, you're a naughty man. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, dear viewer, um, you should come and watch the show live and come into the chat room because you'll see all sorts of carrying on going on. Anyway, I am just going to do the titles, I think, yes, uh, <laughs> while I sort out chat. Yes, it's paper scene. <laughs> Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health Evape. 
UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. Yes, good evening and welcome to this week's Vapor Scene with me, Mark Van B, otherwise known as Mark Green. Yes, it is I. I'm back on your little screens again, um, or your big screens, you never know. I don't know if you're watching it on, you're watching it on a little monitor, a big monitor, or a big TV. I don't know, because you can watch this in all manner of ways. On tablets and on phones and on televisions and all sorts of what have you, yes. Um, so, yes, like I said before about the titles there, Bit of a busy week for me last week um, so I was rambling a lot in the car but I did take some bits and pieces with me um, and then when I came back I had some bits and pieces waiting for me so we're going to talk about those in part three now, I've got some juices down here that you can't see um, that arrived while I was away um, that I ordered the week before and um, it's a bit of a not new-ish it's kind of newish way of doing things you can order but you can mix your own flavors You'll see what I mean in part three. It's all good. Um, what chat got to say? Yes, they'll all be naughty. Ridian, really keep them in check. You're on chat monitor status tonight. Give yourself a night off. <laughs> we'll be updating the uh, the swear filter to include that word, what begins with F and ends in E. Yes. And it's not custard. No. Custard's allowed. The other word isn't. Um, so there you go. So what, what have I got for this week? Well, I've got some news stories, but what I'm going to start with is something that's popped up over the last couple of days, uh, and it's this. Yes, Vape Jam UK 2 coming back to London in June 2016. Now you may wonder why I'm kind of musing with that, uh, and I'm musing with that specifically because on May the 20th, 2016, the Tobacco Products Directive including Article 20 as it stands, becomes law in the UK. And when that happens, any gathering, such as Vape Jam UK, or such as Vape Expo, or such as Vape Fest, or such as eSig Expo, will not happen, because it will be illegal, it will be prohibited. And if you look at Article 20, this is Article 20, Section 5. Any form of public or private contribution to any event, activity or individual person with the aim or direct or indirect effect of promoting electronic e-cigarettes, electronic cigarettes and refill containers and involving and taking place in several member states or otherwise having cross-border effects is prohibited. It will be prohibited. This will be prohibited. Your forums will be prohibited because that's what Article 20 is all about. It's all about stifling us. It's all about cutting off what we want. It's all about taking away our choice. And the only way you're gonna to get to an event like Vape Jam UK 2, or Vape Fest, or Vapor Expo, or whatever happens next year, the only way we're gonna get that is if totally wicked action in the court in Europe in October time is effective. If it's not effective, then I'm sorry, but we're all stuffed. And I need to get this out there, first of all, tonight. You need to sign the petition. You need to get your friends and family to sign the petition. You need to speak to your MPs, your MEPs, anyone that will listen. Otherwise, we won't have anything next year, after May the 20th. 
we will become outlaws. Now, if we st if we still broadcast this show and our other shows, we will become outlaws. We will be, I don't know, I don't know how they're going to do it, how they're going to prosecute, how they're going to actually enforce all this stuff, but they will. And you can just imagine an event taking place after it becomes law, being shut down, going all over the media, one, you know, I could, I could see Mrs. McAvan there rubbing her hands going, yes, we've got you. We don't want that. So unless we take action, that is what's going to happen. So please, please do the right thing. Speak to everybody you can and get them to sign the Article 20 petition. And guys, if you've got it, can you put the link into chat, please, for that? Because we really need to get everybody. And I know I'm talking to the, to the converted already. I know I'm preaching to the converted because everyone in chat and most people who watch our shows know about this and have done this already. But we need to keep up the fight. Um, Pete Collins, freedom of speech. Yeah, well, that's not going to that's not going to cut it. Yes, we've got freedom of speech in this country, but it's freedom of speech. However, this law is going to stifle our freedom of speech, and this is something that we've got to fight against. You know, it's just wrong. The whole thing is just wrong, and the only chance we have thus far is what Fraser's doing with totally wicked and taking the action in the European courts. No, no one else is doing it. So we need to support them. That's it. We need to support them in as whatever way we can. Otherwise, there'll be no more vape fest, there'll be no more vapor expos, there'll be no more vape jams, and there'll be no more forums and stuff like this in this country. And whether or not they can stifle the stuff coming from the States, like from people like Dimmy and Phil, and Nick, Nick Grim Green, if they can stop those videos hitting YouTube. Can they get YouTube to do that? I don't know. But what will happen is, if we're broadcasting from this country, they can shut us down. And they will shut down all the events. So for goodness sake, we've got to take action. Uh, and a lot of posts on the uh, Vape Jam website were saying the same kind of thing about the TPD. So hopefully they're gonna change the date uh, and make it May before May the 20th. So if everything happens before May the 20th, we'll get some good events next year. It's either going to be a celebration or it's going to be a mass blowout before things hit the fan. But things will hit the fan unless we take action. <sighs> Neil says, bring it on. I'm ready to go for court to this. Yes. Um, I'm just looking at there. Top of about two million of us take a break in the law. Yes. This was what will happen though. People will go underground. They'll get their stuff black market. And who knows what's going to be in it. You know, we've all we've all seen the old cheap fags thing where you get sweeping up things off the floor in your cheap fags. You get all sorts of stuff in your cheap fags. You don't get normal cigarettes. You get the worst of the worst. So if we're going to get juice underground, you don't know what's going to be in that. It could be all sorts. It could be mixed in a really filthy bathtub, for all you know. Um, we need regulation. This is true. But we need sensible regulation. And the only way we're going to get that is if we fight for it. And the only way we're going to fight for it, at the moment, is we have to support Totally Wicked's action. So please, get on and, and do that. Speak. I'm going to speak to my MP again and get a question asked in the House. I'm going to speak to Dan Jarvis and get him to ask a question. Uh, I shall be doing that this week. So hopefully I can get something within the next couple of weeks. <sighs> anyway, there you go. Now, that being said, I want to talk about another um, event that happened in the States. And if I go to this story, here we go. This is in New Jersey. Health officials bust vendors, promoters at NJ e-cigarette convention for indoor vaping. Oh yes. Vapor Expo NJ this weekend drew roughly 1,200 vendors and electronic cigarette enthusiasts, as well as local and county health officials, who find the Expo Hall manager, the event promoters and nearly 70 sellers about 50,000 US dollars for violating the state's indoor smoke-free air law. 
Edison and Middlesex County Health officials wrote 66 citations against vendors over the course of the weekend for allowing customers to vape inside the New Jersey Convention and Exposition Centre, said Jay Elliott, director of the Township Division of Health and Human Services. Really? This is a vaping event. It's been set up as a vaping event and they didn't bother to find out whether or not it was going to be legal or not that it was going to infringe any of the smoke-free laws. Obviously it has, and they closed them down. Here's some more on that story. Uh, on Saturday, uh, Balog said he intended to challenge the fines, arguing health officials were mistakenly applying the law to what is a private building he had leased out of a three-day show. The township signed off, they knew there would be vaping, he said. Elliot disagreed, although the Expo Hall is a private building, we were assured this was a private trade show. It was effectively open to the public, Elliot said, as long as patrons paid their $10 entry fee, vendors paid $25 and signed a document saying they were joining a club called the Vape Expo NJ 2015. That obviously didn't work. Um, the, the club ploy didn't work, um, so they were busted. Um, that is what will happen in this country. <laughs> that is what will happen. They'll get us under some some law or another based upon Article 20. They'll get round it that way. Um, what I was slightly dismayed to see is a post by Phil Basado, um, and it was this. This was at that convention, and this particular company thought it would be a good idea to have pole dancers. Really? pole dancers i mean we had the booth bunnies and you get booth bunnies at lots of events be that i mean the motor show used to be wall-to-wall -wall ladies all over the cars um, and there were some very scantily clad uh, ladies at vape jam and also to a lesser extent at vapor expo but a pole pole dancers if your juice is that good you don't need to have gimmicks like that and that's the kind of thing that the people who want to get rid of us will just latch onto and they'll make what they will of it. So why give them the ammunition? And this was at the same event where everyone was kicked out, basically. Let's see what chat I've got to say. And I'm, I'm on my own, so I've got to look down here. Uh, Bernice Evans said, who said you could copy my pick? <laughs> Which one were you, Bernice? I thought you were blonde. Uh, <laughs> And Diamond Ola says, UKV has a lot of posts against Totally Wicked because of the PAS. Well, we'll be looking more into the PAS from last week. Um, a bit tomorrow, I think. Because Iridian was there. Uh, let me just get my other mouse. Uh, Ashley Miller said, 3,000 people at Vapefest, 5 coppers, the whole of the police force by the time the cuts come in. <laughs> Don't see that working. <laughs> yeah, this is a good point. Um, it'll be, you know, it'll be. They'll have just a couple of cameras, you know, like if you if you go into a box junction in London. That happened to me once. I was in a box junction for about, about a foot and a half, and I got a sixty-five pound fine through the uh, letter box. Um, two weeks later, because some bloke on the other end of a camera was there looking and playing with his joystick and then taking my picture, and I was a foot and a half going out of a box junction. For, I looked at the video, the little footage, I was in there for three seconds, 65 quid. It's not bad, is it? 20 quid a second? Yeah. That's what they'll do. They'll be doing stuff like that. What else have we got in chat? Let me scroll down. <laughs> Disco Des says, which was the blonde end? <laughs> Des, come on. Yes, vaping rights. The, the, only, we, uh, we, the only way we're going to get to keep doing what we enjoy doing is to fight for it that's it you know there, there's no other way around it there's 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 no sugar-coated pill here uh, if article 20 gets into UK law on May the 20th then things will change and there'll be no way around it because it will be law um, getting a law changed after it's in is a lot harder than getting it changed before it's in let me tell you um, and Gordy, here we go. We need to forget the past. It is the future that matters. And you're 
entirely right, Gordy. You know, what happened with UKV and Totally Wicked in the past was somebody else. It wasn't Fraser Cropper. Jason was, was the kind of instigator of that. And it, it's, it's history. It's got to be history. What Fraser's done with Totally Wicked, changed the company around. He knows exactly what he's talking about. He's done so much research. If you saw last week's show, you'd have seen him talking to Dave. Um, he knows exactly what needs to be done. You just need support. And he's putting the money up here. Let's not forget that. It's not exactly going to cost a couple of quid. We're talking millions of pounds that his company is putting up. And he's the only one that's doing it. Now, maybe he's doing it for his own company and for his own employees. Well, that's good. Because as a responsible employer, he wants to fight for his business. But by that action, he's also going to make a difference to every other vapour in this country and in Europe. So let's not forget that because... We need to, need to look forward and not backwards all the time. Because that'll get us nowhere, will it? It'll just get us absolutely nowhere. <sighs> right, let's go to the break while I look at chat. And then um, we'll come back and we'll have some other stuff. Yes, see you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. Often imitated, never duplicated. Award-winning service and products from cloud9vaping.co.uk. And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. And we're back. Hello. Uh, we're just trying to catch up on chat there, Julianne. It's not easy because <laughs> there's a lot going on in there. Um, and if he's the right mouse, I'll even get to some more. Um, there is some really bad legislation that, that, that's happened in this country. B's pointed out there about uh, the Welsh Assembly. Um, and Neil Robinson has says, Fraser has more than earned my respect with everything he has done for vaping as a whole and not just his company. Um, like I said, we need to let bygones be bygones and we need to think about the future as opposed to the past because they're their only hope at the moment. You know, it's almost a help me, help me Obi-Wan, your only hope um, because that's what it is right now. Um, what else we got in chat here? Um, Leanna Ola said, same as the TBD was before it reached the rubber stamp of Parliament. Yes. Now, obviously, we did the whole campaigns on Vapor Trials TV. We did the Twitter bombs. We did the writing to the MPs on mass and everything else. Uh, got ignored a lot of the time. Went to Brussels and did the black balloon thing. But then it was passed. We got slightly shafted by some of the people that we thought were supporting us. Um, and others had to vote a certain way because that's the way they were told to. Um, but since then, the onus hasn't really been on us, the, 
the community, the vapours, to, to keep action up. Uh, and that's where we're falling down, really. We need to keep the pressure up. Um, OK. Just looking at chat again. I think what we'll do is uh, we'll have a little bit of VT. I'll have my first bit of VT of the night. Uh, and this was me in the car last week. Um, <laughs> it was rather sunny, so I was wearing my shades. Yeah. Um, have a little look at this. I thought I'd start the Marcos Vapor Trails section again um, because I quite enjoy doing that. Uh, and a few people have said to me over the past couple of events, um, why don't you do the Marcos Vapor Trails anymore? Well, it's just time really. Um, a time and other things get in the way so you you don't do a particular um, you don't do a particular section of the show and you know we'll bring it back so I thought I'd do some Marco's vapor trails this week uh, and what I thought I'd do during these uh, vapor trails is um, just do some little juices yeah um, and today I'm using the, the vapor shark which as you can see if I can do it that way is getting a little bit warm yes uh, I do have the other one with me in my bag and that's got the silicon cover on it or as I like to call it the mod Johnny um, <laughs> um, but I need to get another one for my uh, other RDNA uh, 40 mod yes uh, I do have with me as well the uh, the orange VT60 with its silicon cover <laughs> Uh, and I've got a different juice in that. What I'm going to do is I brought along some titanium coils um, in my bag uh, and I will be changing that over when I'm in Scotland and um, putting in some uh, some other juice uh, and I think what I'm going to use on that is some Elements Key Lime Pie which you would have heard me talking to David from Elements about uh, on last week's show. Um, and that is rather tasty, I have to say. I tried it on the stand, and uh, I have a 10 ml bottle, so I shall uh, I shall titanium it up in the VT60, and uh, we'll talk about that at some point in another little section. Um, but for the moment, um, I'm on my first leg of my journey, and my first leg takes me to Washington, Tyne and Wien, and I'll be there for a few hours, and then. Uh, I shall be then cutting across the country and heading over to South Ayrshire. Yeah. Um, so in the uh, in the RJ4, I must apologise as well for the bounciness. Um, I can't help the roads. I will try and stabilise the video in post as much as I can. <laughs> um, so I've got a uh, I've got a coiled up RBA in the sub tank, uh, and it's coiled up at point two. Uh, and I've got it set at 500 degrees and 25 watts currently. Uh, and what I have in here is donut powder. Yeah, donut powder. And I got this from the lovely chaps at Herman Vapes, um, also known as Namba Juice, um, who were at the last two events. Uh, and uh, they do have a Facebook group you can go to. Um, the guys there, very nice guys. We had a really good laugh with them. At both events and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing them at Vape Fest as well. But let me tell you about this donut pounder juice. I actually thought it was donut powder at first but it's not. It says donut pounder on the bottle uh, which I believe is in my bag but I can't get to that right now. Uh, it's six milligram and this is the thing. I've got to just mention this. Never in a million years did I think I would be vaping on six milligram juice. Um, simply because I, I'm, I started at 12 milligrams, that is, not 12 baby. Uh, started at 12 milligrams, I then went up to 18 or 24, and that was my norm, 18 or 24, uh, mouth to lung, and that was my bag. But since venturing into more sub ohm vaping um, and using more power than I ever used to use because um, I would be like 10 watts you know or 4.6 volts or whatever 
now I'm regularly at 25 um, or on the other Vapor Shark I've got that set at 500 degrees and, and 40 watts um, with a 0.16 coil on. Um, the VT60 I have at 60 watts at 500 degrees uh, with a 0.23 coil in it. So as the technology used is changing, you're able to, to go down to a much lower nicotine strength. Uh, and this six milligram is, is hitting the spot simply because I'm doing more lung inhales than mouth to lung inhales. But let me tell you a little bit more about the juice. And he creates a cloud. <laughs> um, I've actually got the um, the airflow quite high on this, but I'm using them. Um, you can't see now, I'll have to open my window. There you go, I've let some of the, let some of the vapor out. Um, I'm using my Gary Dibley tip, which has got quite a small hole at the top, so it's not a, uh, it's not a chaff pipe. If I had a chaff pipe on the top, then um, it would you'd get even more vapor. But I've found that using a smaller tip you can still do mouth to lung and if you vary the airflow you can still do mouth to lung which is rather good um, but this donut pounder juice it's just like eating a donut it is uh, that's what Dave Kitson said to me he said oh, I've got to get some of that donut pounder um, and um, yes so I got some as well and it is it's um, it's sweet but it's not too sweet it's got quite a nice depth to it. And that was a mouth to lung inhale. Um, it's, it's thick and unctuous vapour and it is very tasty. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be back later I think uh, on my second leg of the journey. Um, see what else I can tell you. Yes, that was my first little bit of journey last week. Filmed on the Samsung S6. Other smartphones are of course available. <laughs> I've got a nifty little um, bracket that goes on a windscreen and it's wireless charging. It spins around, it's very good. Um, now, going on chat there, who was it that mentioned what? Andy Leach says he's going back to 80 milligram 50 50. Um, Castello 2 says you end up paying three or four times more for your use for your liquid Marco. Well, yeah, I do make a lot. I probably make about 75% of what I vape. So if I'm making it at 6 milligram, making it at 75, it's probably a little bit cheaper making it at uh, um, 24 rather than 75. I use 75 and mix it down. Um, but the stuff that I, w I was getting at, uh, at the events and stuff, um, I was three milligrams, six milligram, twelve, um, and I've I've sub owned twenty four. It's fun for a very short time, <laughs> and then it's like, ah, no, too much. Um, what else have we got in there? Just having a little bit of a look. Um, Gary Dibby says. Yeah, Rob, but it packs a punch. You're talking about the donut pounder, aren't you, Gary? Good evening, by the way. Nice to see you in chat. <laughs> um, yes, I've ha I have it in here, uh, and I've got a little bit left, and I've put a bigger tip on. And it is rather tasty, I have to say. I can't chuff out too much because it interferes with my green screen, <laughs> and I disappear, uh, which is not good. Um, I was vaping quite a lot in the car on different juices uh, and as i said i did take my orange vt60 um i do have some issues with this with this tank i have to say um not the tank but the actual atomizer itself uh, you'll see a bit more of that um in the next segment um which is coming up in part three maybe no i'll do it actually i'll do it in in a, in a little while in a couple of in a couple of minutes i'll do it let me just scan back down to chat. I need somebody here, you see, to look at chat for me. Yes. Um, Kelly James says that uh, I vape 
two to three milligram now on a dripper. Yeah, now you see, I'm not a big dripper. Big dripper, oh, I'm not a big dripper. I do have one, um, which is the Royal Hunter, which was uh, very kindly given to me at Vapor Expo. Um, and I need to change the colours on it, to be fair, because I've been trying, if I go out a shot, all these liquids, which we're going to talk about in part three. Um, and uh, yes, so I've kind of, I think I need to change it around a bit because it's, it's getting a bit um, um, complicated flavour wise because I've kind of been mixing them up. <laughs> That's the thing with the dripper. If you're going to drip different juice, um, it all gets amalgamated, isn't it? So you can't really get the flavour of the one you were going to drip on in the first place, type thing. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm not a huge dripper. I like to have my tanks, get it full of juice, and then just do my thing. Um, but that doesn't always happen, does it? Um, let's go to my second section then. Here we go. Here's, here's part two of my uh, vapor trail. Good afternoon. Yes, it is I. And I am on my way home now from Scotland. Uh, as you know from the first little bit of VT, I was uh, driving up on Wednesday. Uh, and I said in that little bit of VT, I had my VT60 with me that I picked up at Vapor Expo uh, and it had the nickel coil in the tank. Now, I also said that I was going to swap it out for a titanium coil uh, when I had the chance and I did that on Wednesday night. Uh, I'd vaped the thing dry um, and obviously with temperature control that didn't make much difference. Um, so uh, yes, I vaped it dry, so I changed over the coil. Now the coil is still fine, the nickel coil is still fine, it hasn't gone or anything, I just thought I'd swap it out for a titanium one. Um, so I put the titanium coil in and I filled the tank with some nice juice, which is Elements Key Lime Pie um, that I mentioned that I had. And it is rather nice, I have to say. And now, I have this set at 500 degrees Fahrenheit and it's currently at uh, 50 watts. Now the titanium coils come in at about 0.4 ohm resistance and the nickel coils come in at about 0.23 resistance. This is currently showing as 0.39. More than that because I've been using it for some time. Um, so uh, let's give it a little blast, shall we? And as you can see, having to open my window to get rid of the vapour, um, otherwise I will not be able to see in my car. It produces um, very well. Now, I was talking to the guys um, in our team Skype last night, um, and I was saying that I wasn't all that impressed with uh, the titanium coils, uh, and that I thought I was getting a better vape using the tank on a vapor shark um, but I gave it another try I've mucked around with the temperatures and um, with the wattages but also with the airflow and I've got this about half open it's not fully open it's half open uh, the tank is a whistler I have to say it does like to whistle when you're vaping um, but half open airflow on this juice uh, 50 watts uh, and 500 degrees Fahrenheit seems to be the sweet spot for this particular juice and I think that is what is so good about these TC devices whether it be a VT60, whether it be a Vapor Shark, whether it be another incarnation of the DNA 40 chip um, or a different type of chip with temperature control this is the beauty and once you've got yourself around the flavour and around the right combination for you, that is where it really works, I've got to say. Um, the flavour that's coming off this juice is immense, it really is. The first thing you get is this sweet hit of lime. Um, it just envelops and as you take an inhale, you can feel it kind of rolling around and building and then when you exhale you're getting like a cookie biscuit 
crumb base type flavour coming off. Um, it is, it's rather nice. And it produces a volumes, volumes of vapour. Um, and you're left with this sweet sweetness on your lips, really. Um, it is a rather sweet vape. I do find with Elements juices they are quite sweet. They pack so much flavour into them as well. What I haven't tried yet is the citrus one. I've got some at home. Um, I will try that later. But what I do have waiting for me is something we're going to look at later on in the show. Uh, and that is a company called Mixervape.com. Uh, and what you do with them is you log on, you create an account, and you create your own juices from their flavours. Uh, and you can pick what flavours you want uh, and how much of those go into your mix. And you can mix up to five different flavours in one concoction. So we'll be looking at that later in the show. I've already done a, uh, a pre-record of me mixing the juices online. I now have them at home, so when I get back, I'm going to uh, wick up my Royal Hunter dripper that uh, I picked up very kindly um, at uh, Vapor Expo. And we'll try those juices, uh, and I shall let you know what I think of them. So that will be coming up um, later on in the show. There you go, that was my second little bit from the car. Uh, and that Elements Key Lime Pie Juice is really, really nice, I have to say. Uh, and it's just, it's really, really sweet. And what having this at the moment, strangely that this is orange, because I've got the orange juice in here at the moment. Uh, but I've ditched the titanium coil because it, it really wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me at all. And I swapped over to, uh, another nickel coil um, but what I've got in here at the moment is a rebuildable um, coil that I was very kindly given by somebody at Vapor Expo and I have forgotten the guy's name and I'm really sorry so if you're in chat and you gave me the rebuildable CL for the uh, tornado tank um, thank you very much I've got it coiled up it's at 0.19 um, and it's producing rather nicely yes so um, I did buy a whole box of titanium coils at Vapor Expo to go with this. So I'm, I'm going to persevere for a little bit with the titanium coils, but I am a little bit underwhelmed with them. Uh, and I do believe that Mr. Kitson is as well. Um, but he will, he will say, because he's in chat, and he's very grumpy tonight because he's been to Ikea. Other furniture stores are, of course, available. <laughs> but they don't all sell hot dogs which is probably uh, the thing. Anyway, let's have the second set of ads, and when we come back, there's more. Yes, see you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. Vapors, Dripper just got 40% bigger. So if you love discovering new e-liquids, tell Dripper what flavours you like and we'll send you 70ml of juice and at least 5 flavours. With a money back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe, dripper.co.uk What's in this e-cig cloud? Harmless water vapour, right? Pretty much, yes. Compared to a lit cigarette, 
It's much safer than smoke, but it contains nicotine. And nicotine on its own isn't toxic and doesn't cause cancer. If you're worried about switching to vapour, here are some facts. No tar, no smoke, no burnt tobacco. Cooking your evening meal produces more toxins than are found in exhaled vapour. Tobacco smoke contains toxins at very high levels, and vapour does not. And that vapour contains 6,000 times less carcinogens than cigarette smoke. Electronic cigarette vapour. There's nothing to be frightened of. The only dangerous electronic cigarette is a banned one. And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and pure perfection e-liquids. And welcome back to part three. I was just looking in chat there and apparently um, Dave Kitson has got a five litre keg of Hobgoblin that is still unopened. What I think you should do with that, Mr. Kitson, is bring it to Vape Fest. Yes, because um, I know you're going. Uh, and uh, then you can have the Hobgoblin uh, and Disco Des is bringing in a load of cider. And I just ordered a load of venison to make my burgers with for Vape Fest. So, you know, we're going to have little swapsies. Big barbecue. Venison burgers, hobgoblin, cider, fall over, take to aspirin, call me in the morning. That sounds about right, doesn't it? Yeah, that's how vape fest is going to be for me, I think, this year. Yes, last year um, I spent too much time wandering up and down filming. This year I'm going to have half a day wandering up and down filming and then a day and a half of drinking and eating burgers. <laughs> and having much merriment. Um, Andy Lee says he finds Andy's voice reassuring. Yes, interesting. But that burger on that little bit of ET bears no resemblance at all to the burgers that I will be taking down to Vape Fest to be cooked on whoever has got, has got a barbecue, because I'm not taking a barbecue. So I shall be stealing space on people's barbecues for, you know, the payment of one burger or something. Yeah. But there you go. Chief Keith says it sounds good to me. Yes. <laughs> Um, Gordy says finding DK, Des and Marco at Vape Fest. Yes, well you can't miss this can you? I'm the tall one Des is a little bit shorter and about the same height as Dave K but Dave K's got a big beard so you can't miss this really uh, you, well just look for me <laughs> and they'll be next to me <laughs> or on the floor depending on how much of the homebrew we drink um, but there you go um, Neil Robinson says there's rumours that a local B&M will be doing a minibus trip to Vapefest this year, so I might make it yet. Yes, well, by B&M, we don't mean the discount um, household store. I mean, it's a mortar shop. Yes, in case you're watching for the first time. Um, right, what are we on? got 14 minutes, so I've got my little bit of ET for you. Now, this bit of ET, apologies for the quality of it, because it's a screen grab. Um, I went to a website called Mix of Eight, uh, and I made these bottles of juice. Well, I didn't make them, I ordered them online. Um, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. It's it's quite a neat idea. Um, I'll, um, I'll give you my feedback on said juices after you've seen said VT. Yes, so uh, have a little look. At eSig Expo a couple of weeks ago, I met a couple of uh, nice chaps called Josh Innes and Sam Greenhalge. And they have this site that you can see in front of you called Mixer. And it's uh, www.mixervape.com. And uh, as you can see there, you choose up to five flavours to go into your vape. Uh, you adjust the flavour concentration to make the perfect blend. And then you give it a name. Uh, and select nicotine and PG stroke VG strength. Uh, and then um, they mix it for you and send it on. So I have created an account and what we're going to do is I am going to um, mix some juices and then we'll have them sent and then I'll taste them for you and uh, we'll see what happens. So 
I've already created an account, so I'm going to sign in. Um, and I'm going to sign in thus. You then go on to your Mix A Vape page. Uh, and you can see there, there is all sorts of flavours. Yeah. So I think we're going to start with something fruity. What do we think? I think I'm going to go for black cherry, black currant, mm, black cherry, black currant. And maybe a bit of what you think? So many choices. Um, cranberry. There we go. Black cherry, black currant, and cranberry. And we're going to hit next. And then it says how to blend. So you find a perfect blend, a perfect taste by changing the amount of each flavour in your e liquid. Drag the bars up or down to adjust the blend of flavours. Got it. So I think we need to have um, quite a bit of black cherry. So we'll have 40% black cherry. Uh, we'll have 25% cranberry and 35% black currant. So that's that. And we'll hit next. Now, the name that appears on the bottle, and we'll call this Marco's Cherry Mix. Now the flavour, I would probably say between 10 and 20%. Now, not knowing what these flavours are like, I, I don't really know how we're going to go there. So uh, I'm going to leave that at 20% for this bottle. And the nicotine strength, let us try this one at 6 milligram because then we can use it in the sub tanks. Um, and I would like something like a 3070. And that would give it plenty of opportunity for wicking as well. So we're going to add that to the basket. Yay! So let's create another one. We'll have a uh, peppermint and what should we have? Peppermint and lime. Tahiti distilled. No idea what that is, but we'll give it a go. Uh, now this one, we're going to want less peppermint and more lime, so something like 65% lime with a bit of peppermint should be good. We'll do this one at 15% and we'll also do this one at 6 milligram, and we'll leave that um, as 30-70 and we'll call this Minty Lime or Marco's Minty Lime. Marco's Minty Lime. There we go. So that's that. And we'll add that to the basket. Okay. We'll create another one. Let's have a chocolate and tangerine. Is there any orange in there? No orange. Um, yeah, chocolate tangerine. There we go. We'll give that a next. And what we want on this one is 60-40. We'll do this at 12 milligram and we'll do it at 30-70. And we'll call this Marco's oops spell it right shock tang 
Okay, how many bottles are there? That's three. So let's have some more. We'll have a menthol eucalyptus and lemon lime with some honey. <laughs> and um, we'll take the honey down to quite low. And we'll have 50% on the menthol eucalyptus. A little bit of that. So this is kind of a cold remedy one. Um, Marco's remedy and we'll do 20% flavor and we'll do this one at 12 milligram and 30 70. We'll add that to the basket. And there you go. Let me just mute myself. Um, yes, there was a couple more. I did five in the end, but you get the picture. Um, you can select your flavours, select how much of each flavour you want, and then they mix it and send it out to you. Um, and I saw there, um, <laughs> Ridian says, no, that's not a health claim. I just called it Marco's Remedy, the last one, because it had menthol, eucalyptus, lime and honey. Uh, and I'm vaping on that one in here which is a nimbus tank uh, which i picked up at vapor expo um the um the brother little brother to the cumulus tank yeah um and the remedy one smells what's the word i'm thinking of rank actually <laughs> it smells awful it smells really sweet and sickly and honey and awful and i thought is this going to be is this going to turn it into a rank tank and no, it doesn't actually. It's really, really, really nice. Um, and I shall be um, making that again. Yes. Um, now, the minty lime. I made the minty lime. And um, it, that is nice as well. It's peppermint and lime. Um, but I need to really have less peppermint and more lime. Um, the choco tang. Again, I made that with not enough of the citrus they do have orange now they didn't have orange before they do have orange and they've got some other flavors as well have a look and you'll see what flavors they've got um, that's not too bad the cherry one um, was a bit lackluster really um, needs a little bit of refinement and the last one I made was I made I call it Marco's dessert vape and this was strawberry uh, sweet strawberry cream and vanilla with some raspberry and that's actually quite pleasant um so out of the five bottles that i ordered one is a bit yeah it's vapable um but i probably wouldn't make that particular concoction again this is the danger that you've got um it's a bit like mixing it yourself although it's more expensive so i will say that if you're buying all your concentrates, you're spending three, four, five pounds on a bottle of concentrate, depending on where you get it from. Um, you've got that initial outlay. You don't know how much that costs. Um, if you're going to like it or not, so that could end up, you know, being traded or given away or whatever. Um, so it's not a bad way of doing it. They are 10 mil bottles. I did see that going around in chat. Uh, so it's eight pound forty nine for a 10 mil bottle. Um, the labels have got all the right information on them. Um, they are handwritten, the, the name, your particular name, uh, and also the information about the, uh, the mix is on there. The rest is printed, and it's got the tactile triangle on the top of the bottle, and it's a childproof bottle as well. Um, I know they are looking at different bottles, and they are looking at different labels, but if you can imagine trying to match up an order and then printing a label for it, the possibilities of that going wrong um, are are there. So the fact that they've got a pre-printed label that they write the information on in indelible pen um, is, is good, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so only one out of five was a bit dodgy. Um, I have to say that the guys very kindly gave us some codes um, so we could try this out. Um, so yes, the, the, my favourite has to be the Remedy one that I thought smelt really rank. Go figure that one.
<laughs> Let's see what chat I've got to say. There's a lot of chat talking about uh, Vapefest, which is um, the 7th and 8th of August. It's nearly upon us, and there's going to be live music at this one. I'm looking forward to it like you would not believe. Um, it's going to be a great weekend, and I hope the weather is as good as it was um, at Birmingham, apart from the Sunday where it rained a bit. But if we get rain in the evening, it's okay, apart from if you're camping, in, in which case you should have booked a hotel. Uh, <laughs> like I have. I don't camp, no. If I could glamp in a big tent with a nice bed and have a lovely fitted bathroom next to it, then I'd probably camp, glamp. But I prefer a hotel with proper amenities. Yes, and somewhere to, you know, plug in my stuff and charge it and stuff. Um, so, what's going on? Uh, Liana says China is cheap. I'm not sure what that, that actually refers to. How many more sleeps, Glory? I don't know. It's it's a week on it's a week on Friday, isn't it? It's the twenty first today. Two weeks on Friday, yeah, or two weeks on Saturday. I'm going on the Friday, um, so I shall be there, many minting from the Friday night until the Sunday afternoon, where I will then wend uh, back up here to start editing <laughs> for Tuesday's show. Um, so that's um, just about it. We've got about ten seconds left. Yeah. Um, and I've still got a bit of VT, which is five minutes long. So I'll show you that next week. I'll I'll put that in the bank for next week, along with another bit of VT that I've got uh, for next week as well. More to come on that. Uh, you will see that next week. Um, so don't forget, tomorrow night it is Matt with Ridian, isn't it? Wasn't it? Marvellous. Um, with uh, the Cave Stroke Melly show. Yes, it's going to be a bit of a different show. And I think I'm on it as well, if I remember rightly. <laughs> I remember what I've agreed to. Um, <laughs> last week, obviously, I was you know, incommunicado as of Tuesday night because I was in Scotland, and it's just, I can't do much up there at all. It's more than I can get just to get a bit of Skype chat going on the hotel Wi-Fi, and uh, 4G is not that abundant at the moment, uh, apart from in Glasgow, and I wasn't in Glasgow, so there you go. So don't forget, tomorrow night it is the cave, Stroke Melee, <laughs> with uh, whoever's there. Uh, and then I will see you next week. Uh, will I have a guest? I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. It's you know, it's organic. It's how we like it. Yes. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, chat. Um, good night, all. And I will see you soon. Tati bye. <laughs>